Ya. Okay. Right. Welcome to the Lincoln City Council meeting of March 13th, 2017. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with LB 898, a copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the back of our chambers. Uh, the order of business of the City Council is as follows. The clerk will call the items listed on the agenda under public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on an item should come forward after the clerk reads that item. The applicant and those in favor should speak first, following by those who are opposed. The applicant may then make one short rebuttal. Testifiers must clearly state their name and address, and after giving testimony, if they could please fill out the pink slips uh, by the microphones, that would be very helpful to the clerk. Testimony is limited to five minutes per speaker, and as a courtesy, an alarm will sound after four minutes. After all public hearings, the council will vote on resolutions and items listed under third reading. On the second and last Mondays of the month, immediately prior to adjournment, Anyone may speak on any issue not on today's agenda nor planned for a future agenda. Courtesy and decorum are expected of all who come before this body. No one may approach city staff without permission from the council and please no applauding, booing or other expression of support or opposition uh, except through your testimony. All cell phones should be turned off and private conversations taken outside the chamber. During the week, if you have any questions regarding an agenda item, please feel free to contact the council. Teresa, will you please call the first item? Yes, just for public information, we do not have a Mayor's Award of Excellence today. Our first item is our public hearing consent agenda, items one through eight. Would anyone like to come forward and speak on the consent agenda? <coughs> All right, seeing none. Teresa. All right, we can act on these items. Item one was introduced by Eskridge. So moved. Second. Moved by Roy and second by Trent. Discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried. Five to zero. Item two was introduced by Fellers? So moved. Second. Moved, uh, seconded by Roy. <laughs> Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried. Five to zero. Public hearing liquor resolutions. 
Those giving testimony are asked to come forward, raise their right hand for the clerk to administer the oath. After the oath, witnesses shall state their names and addresses. I'll call items 9 through 14 together. They are the application of Hy-Vee Inc. doing business as Hy-Vee Restaurant 1 for a Class I liquor license at 5010 O Street and the related manager application of Robert Reef. The application of Hy-Vee Restaurant 2 for a Class I liquor license at 1601 North 84th Street and the related manager application. And the application of Hy-Vee Restaurant 4 for a Class <coughs> I liquor license at 6001 Village Drive and the related manager application. Hello. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you believe it to be? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is Rob Reif, and um, basically I'm asking that we can update our liquor license to include a sit-down restaurant in three of our locations here in town. Be very similar to our North 27th High V. Okay. Any questions from the council? Cindy. Thank you. Mr. Reif, thanks for being here today. So how are things going on North 27? <laughs> well, um, very good, very good. So, I've so far we things. have probably 100 restaurants in the Midwest, which we've updated, and um, only one in Lincoln, North 27th, and it's doing very well. So they'd like to, up, corporate like to update our other ones. And um, two of the three of these are in Northeast Lincoln, one's on 50th and O Street, and the other's on North 84th, right? Yes. Good, glad to hear you guys are doing good business. Thank you. Roy. When will these be open? Um, they're finishing up Kansas City, then they're doing Omaha, and they're doing Lincoln. So we're kind of at a, um, whenever the construction guys get to us, they wanted to start them in April, but I think the construction's a little behind schedule. So sooner or refer later, hopefully. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here today. Any other questions? We're good. Would anyone else like to testify on this, these items? <clears throat> All right, Teresa, please call the next item. All right, I'll call items 15 and 16 together. They're the application of Fairfield Inn and Suites for a Class C liquor license at 1000 West Bond Street and the related manager application of Curdy Trevetti. Daryl, I want to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth as you verily believe it to be? I do. Thank you. I'm Daryl K. Stock, attorney at law, 5533 South 27th, uh, Suite 103, Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm attorney for LNK Lodging, uh, LNK2 Lodging, LLC. Uh, this is the same investor group that has the uh, Holiday Inn Express that's next door, uh, next door to the Fairfield. That's the one that's kind of closest to the interstate at this point. So if you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Any questions? Hey, Mr. Stock. Yeah. Could you address a little bit of the uh, police report that we received on some history? On yeah, I have I have not seen it, so I'll do my best. Oh. Um, there's been a, a number of uh, some DUIs and some other things. So. I... Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, I would tell you by one of the owners as you're talking about, <laughs> correct? Mr. Yeah, I would, I, I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, this investor group owns, I gotta count, a seven or eight hotels. Uh, that owner does, uh, is, not, is not the general man, won't be the general manager, and uh, is two or three layers of management uh, above, the, uh, above the, uh, the general manager on the hotel. Could we perhaps, if there are other questions, maybe have uh, our investigator come forward from the police department and talk to us a little bit about what the report is you issued us? <coughs> and if you'd like to take a seat while he testifies, that'd be fine. Thank you. Conan Schaefer with the Lincoln Police Department. Yes, Mr. Schaefer, if our investigator Schaefer, could you address um, the criminal and driving record that you reported to us and give us some sense of direction here on this applicant? Um, certainly. Um, when I uh, did my background investigation, um, it was revealed that Mr. Uh, Trevetti, who's also the applicant uh, for the manager at this location, had uh, recently been convicted of a, a DUI. Um, in following the Liquor Commission's 
policy on uh, alcohol-related, specifically DUI convictions. Um, within the past year, they, they go off of a point system, and this would put uh, Mr. Trivedi in the category that would automatically prompt a hearing with the uh, Liquor Control Commission or with the commissioners. Um, and then, the, you know, at, at this level, you know, a recommendation um, if we were to stay in line with uh, what the Liquor Commission's policy is, um, then, you know, if, if a denial here doesn't, you know, is, is a, you know, not denying the liquor license, but uh, denying that recommendation at this level, which would then allow the Liquor Commission to um, have their hearing and, and make the final evaluation <coughs> and determination there. Now, with uh, the potentially three DUIs, would that be an automatic anyway to the State Liquor Control Board? Um, not necessarily the three. <laughs> it depends upon how, uh, how far back that they are. The Liquor Commission will look back 20 years and uh, assess points depending upon how far back. So um, one DUI conviction within one year is 20 points, which is an automatic referral for a show cause hearing. Um, two years back is 19 points, 18 and so forth. So it kind of depends. And I believe that his previous DUIs have already been addressed through show cause hearings at the Liquor Commission. And is it your recommendation to keep these <coughs> two items linked or um, and have them both receive this? I mean, right now we're taking them together. Um, it would be my recommendation to keep them linked, yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes. Would you like another opportunity to speak, sir? What's the date of that conviction? So I guess I, I was questioning the officer about whether it was a complaint or a conviction. Uh, the, the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission is aware of, of the, the situation. I know that personally because I've been in contact with them. I was questioning Officer Schaefer about whether it was a pending action or a conviction, and that's what he's going to check on right now. Is, is the report show a conviction? Uh, for the recent one here last October says disposition pending, but this was, also, <laughs> okay. this was about a, almost um, a month the, ago. The, the conviction, um, th there has been a, a conviction. It was originally charged as a felony. It was reduced to a misdemeanor, okay. um, but the um, uh, sen he hasn't had the sen sentencing hearing yet, so that's the pending uh, part of it there. Okay. okay. Mr. Stock, now uh, the uh, investigator Schaefer suggested linking these together and one is for the license um, if we separated them and approved the license but perhaps didn't approve this individual as manager would that be an option and then you could come back to us with another individual for manager well depending what yeah. happens but yes I do you have a preference in the matter what we would do we're probably uh, mr. Trevetti the manager on uh, several other licenses also, so I have a hunch that I'm going to be having some conversation with the Liquor Control Commission about this. So I, I guess if that's they, they could be delinked if that's what you decided to I'm, do. I'm wondering if that would help you. And but again, there's some other steps beyond us. Okay. Okay. Um, Jeff, could you just come up and talk to us for a second about that? <coughs> Just before we make our decisions on this, is, is there any problem with approving the the license for the site, but not the manager application, or do you have a recommendation for us to the contrary? Uh, Jeff Kirkpatrick, city attorney. Uh, no, I think that that would be within your within your purview to do that if that's what you decide to do. I think obviously there's going to be steps beyond you, both uh, with this license and probably the other licenses as well. So. Whatever you do is not going to solve the, the challenge that they face either way. All right. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak to these items? Would, would, you. would you like another rebuttal? I, I did call up the staff. So. No, no, thank no. you. Okay. Thank you. thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, I would move approval of items 9 through 15. Second. 
Okay, um, items nine through 15 moved by John and seconded by Trent. Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. And Madam Chair, I move denial of item 16. Second. Uh, that was moved by John and seconded by Trent. Discussion? Again, we are an intermediary step in this process. This will trigger a hearing at the state, which probably would have happened anyway. So um, that is reasoning for our vote. Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Next <clears> then <throat> is item 18. This is our public, only public hearing resolution. It's Comp Plan Conformance 17001, approving an amendment to the Nebraska Innovation Campus Redevelopment Plan to redefine the project area for phase one to reduce the overall size, including the removal of lot one, Nebraska Innovation Campus first edition, and also to identify the project area for the phase two project within the redevelopment area generally located from North Antelope Valley Parkway to North 27th Street between Salt Creek and the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, Railroad corridors, and to describe the phase two project, which includes construction of a three-story office building of approximately 80,000 square feet on property located at Transformation Drive and 21st Street. Good afternoon, I'm Wynne Yermstead with the City's Urban Development Department. Um, we're here with a plan amendment to the Innovation Campus Redevelopment Plan um, that essentially does two things. It redefines um, the first phase of the project, which is complete, and then it creates a project area for the second phase. There we go. So the top half here shows the existing phase one that's in the redevelopment agreement now and what we're a redevelopment plan and what we're proposing is to amend it to include just what has been built so far um, these plans are done so far in advance that it's an educated guess a good guess of what's going to be completed but because of the magnitude and the size of this project um, just the three sites were <coughs> developed so um, this is the old industrial arts building and the companion building. This is the old um, 4-H building and the companion. And this is the uh, existing greenhouse. So essentially <coughs> what it's doing is taking all of this out. Um, originally, the uh, developers had committed to spending $87 million in private investment in four pad sites at that location, and they have actually done that, but in three pad sites. And what this does then, too, is it leaves that one corner. It, preserve, slow today, it? <laughs> it preserves this corner for future development. Um, the developers see that as a pretty prime location for a new building, um, but they would like to wait until they actually have a tenant rather than building a, uh, a building on spec at that location. So that's the first piece of this, is amending that to show phase two, or to change phase one to what has actually been developed, and then to create phase two, which is this. So here you can see this is that lot that's being preserved for the future, and this is the, the location of the new proposed building. And essentially what it's doing is moving the building that was proposed at, 20, at the corner of 21st and, and Transformation Drive and just moving it one site to the west. Um, and as Teresa said, they're looking at a three-story building, 80,000 square feet, which is what was originally proposed on the corner this is the, the site plan. So here's the existing greenhouse building, and here's that lot that's being left. And so this is the location of the new 80,000 square foot building. And here are some images of what's proposed for it. Um, this is <coughs> looking, so this is Transformation Drive right here. Here's that lot that we're taking out of phase one. So this is looking to the east. And this is another image of it. Um, here you can see the greenhouse building from this view. Uh, this view shows looking to the west, so you can see the 
industrial arts building over here and the companion building and the 4-H building and the companion building here. <coughs> proposed parking to go along with the project. And this shows one more view and looking in that same direction. Um, the project has <coughs> a large setback on the front that you can see right in here. That's not consistent with the other buildings, but the reason that's being done is because of the energy system that, that operates at Innovation Campus. The, it's called the CRESS, the Centralized Renewable Energy System. So there's big pipes under the ground there. Um, kind of a, a fun fact is that Clark Anderson, who is designing the landscaping, um, will be working with the UNL horticulture class to work on the landscaping that'll take place in the front of the building there. Um, it will eventually be replatted. It was considered, the project was considered at Urban Design last week where it was unanimously approved. There were no suggestions or recommendations to do anything differently. It also received unanimous approval from UNL's Architectural Design Committee whose job it is to implement um, design standards at Innovation Campus. When we originally do these plan amendments, they are, we submitted this to the planning department back in early January. So it's been two months, more work has been done. Um, Tom Houston, the developer's attorney is here and is going to be introduce, introducing a motion to amend the redevelopment plan further. Um, in the redevelopment plan, it says that we're looking at about a $15.3 million investment, which is still accurate, and TIF of about 2.6 million. Well, given the work that's been done since we first submitted this back in January, they're now projecting an increase up to 3.1 million in TIF. So Tom will be talking with you about that. Um, we don't know the uses of TIF yet. We're just starting those conversations. The extension of Transformation Drive is a very likely possibility for the use of TIF. Um, site preparation will probably be in there, but those are things that are still being determined right now. Um, as far as timeline, they would like to start construction sometime yet this year, um, working to have construction, construction documents done in June and start construction shortly after, assuming we get through the rest of the process, if you approve this. Then we will also be back to you with a redevelopment agreement. Um, I should have mentioned that what they're intending to use the building for is for, as with other buildings and innovation campus, for private sector companies that are interested in leveraging the research capacity of the faculty and students at the university through public-private partnerships with UNL. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Thank you, Wynn. Thank you. <clears throat> Multiple copies for City Council. Madam Chair, members of the council, my name is Tom Houston. My address is 233 South 13th Suite 1900 here in Lincoln. Uh, bef appearing before you today on behalf of Nebraska Nova. With me today is Sean Wooler from Tetrad Property Group, um, uh, gonna be project manager for this project. Uh, Wynn has accurately described the contents of the plan amendment. I wanna talk to you specifically about the uh, motion to amend and the uh, uh, desire to substitute page 29 into the plan amendment, specifically dealing with paragraph three, which was our original projection of the tax increment financing that this project would support. Uh, as I've explained previously, one of the challenges that we always have in tax increment financing, we have a pretty good idea what the base value would be, but we have, our, we have to project what the valuation will be. And for this project, we utilize the formulas used by a Lancaster County Assessor for the adjacent properties. Uh, I did this late December, early January in preparation for the plan amendment. But one omission that I made in that projection was that the uh, formulas used for the, uh, by the county assessor for the existing structures were really for properties that are not entirely new construction. And this building will be entirely new construction. In 80,000 square feet of new construction, I, I, I put a discount on it that was probably inappropriate. So what I seek to do with the motion to amend is to substitute this new page 29 to adjust the tax increment financing amount to uh, change that from 2.6 million to uh, approximately 3.1 million. That $500,000 increase can be attributed to the 
projection in the valuation and the increase uh, caused by the new construction as opposed to renovation of some existing space for the other facilities. Uh, the other thing I was just going to mention is that Wind actually described the uh, plan amendment and on the overhead you will see the plan amendment identifies this specific location. Uh, we know that one of the uses of tax increment financing will be extension of Transmiration Drive. Extending it further east is going to be key for circulation pattern within this project. Uh, ultimately, we think that approximately at this location, at least right now, there is currently designed or contemplated to be a traffic circle uh, to help accommodate that. Uh, th this project is phase two. Uh, we hope to come back to you in a, several weeks with a redevelopment agreement but it could be one of 20 buildings that could be built on Innovation Campus. And uh, so we uh, are trying to streamline the process, make it easier on the city and on the developer as these buildings come forward and fully develop a Nebraska Innovation Campus. We're looking at a plan amendment uh, to deal with kind of a master planning concept uh, based upon some additional planning that has been done for the, for the project itself. With that, I'd ask for your support for the uh, amendment to the redevelopment plan and be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Okay. Teresa, please call the next item. All right. <coughs> our next would be our public hearing ordinances third reading. I'll call items 18 through 21 together. They are comp plan amendment 16006, amending the 2040 comp plan to change the future land use plan to modify growth tiers and future land use on property at North 7th and Alvo Road, annexation 16015, annexing approximately 35.55 acres, approving a conditional annexation and zoning agreement for the development and annexation of property, and a change of zone of legacy homes for a change from AG Agricultural to R3 Residential. This is all at North 7th and Alvo Road. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the Council, Mark Hunziker appearing on behalf of the developer. Thank you for extending us the opportunity to speak today. We are here to say we're happy to, that we have a, an agreement worked out with the city on everything. And so I've delivered a signed agreement to Rick Pale this afternoon, and we hope you'll approve all four of these items. Thank you. Can, oh, actually, Mark, can you just tell us what the agreement ended up, how, how you resolved the issues? Just a quick summary. Um, the, the, uh, the basic disagreement was over the acquisition of additional right-of-way, mm -hmm. and the Public Works Department agreed that the city would purchase additional right-of-way if necessary. And was there anything with the roundabout size that was worked out? Uh, it was left open as to the design <coughs> at, at Public Works option, which whichever way they decide to go. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you for the update. Thank you. Looks like Rick, you'd like to speak. Uh, Rick Pale from the City Law Department. Um, uh, confirmed that Mark Hunter too, did give me a, a signed agreement. I have two originals here with a motion amendment number one. I don't believe the motion the men got out in your packet uh, last Thursday, so it's to adopt a, a new agreement as substitution. And that is for number 20, then? Is that the, the conditional annexation yes. zoning agreement? Agenda item 20, uh, bill number 17R66. And that's where motion to amend number one will come. OK. And you've had time to review. You've, you've had adequate time to discuss no, we, we this had, together. Yeah, we had that put out, but it was not sent out till last Friday. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Would anyone else like to speak to these items? Seeing none, Teresa, please call the next item. That concludes our public hearing. We can move into the voting session. <coughs> public hearing resolutions then is item 17, Comp Plan Conformance 17001. This was introduced by Eskridge. So moved. Second. Moved by Trent and seconded by Roy. Discussion? Um, hereby move motion amend number one to substitute a <coughs> new page 29 in the amendment to the Nebraska Innovation Campus redevelopment plan for phase two to update the proposed cost and financial portion of the amendment to the redevelopment plan as indicated on the substitute page 29 attached and incorporated by this reference. 
Can I get a second on the motion to amend number one? Second. Okay, moved by Trent and seconded by John. Discussion on the motion to amend? <coughs> All right, please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. And now on the main motion, uh, any discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried <clears throat> five to zero. Next then is item 18, Comp Plan Amendment 16006. This was introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Second by John. Discussion? All right, glad that we were able to get resolution <laughs> on these items. Uh, please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Item 19 is annexation 16015, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Seconded by Trent. Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Amp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried 5 to 0. Item 20, the conditional annexation and zoning agreement introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Seconded by Trent. And we have a motion to amend number one. Yes. Move motion to amend number one, which substitutes the Legends Conditional Annexation Zoning Agreement attached here to for the Legends Conditional Annexation Zoning Agreement. This is the new agreement. So can I get a second? Second. Okay, move motion to amend number one moved by Roy, seconded by Trent. Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen. Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Then we need to vote on the, on the main, main motion, motion, please. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Next then is item 21, change of zone 16041, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Okay. Second by John. Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Ordinances third reading, item 22, annexation 17001, annexing approximately 2.07 acres at South Coddington and West Van Dorn, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Second by Trent. Discussion? Just to summarize, the, the primary purpose for this annexation is to allow the, the property to connect to the city sewer service to help with some safety improvements being done at this location at South Coddington and West Van Dorn Street. Uh, please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried <clears throat> 5 to 0. Next is item 23, amending chapter 10.06 of the Lincoln Municipal Code relating to administration and enforcement by amending section 10.06.070 to allow volunteer crossing guards to assist children in crossing streets by adding clarifying language and repealing section 10.06.070 of the Lincoln Municipal Code as hitherto existing, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Seconded by Cindy. Discussion? Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is the first step in um, a process whereby we are helping children to be able to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, navigate and receive assistance at intersections where maybe the school is too far from the school for the school to provide personnel. So it would uh, eventually provide for uh, participation by volunteers that would be trained by our local police department. This just basically says there's nothing that in our code that prohibits the use of volunteer crossing guards. <clears throat> Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Item 24, approving the transfer of cash and appropriations for Willard Community Center capital campaign for renovations, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. Seconded by Cindy. I have a motion to amend number two. We were looking at a motion to amend number one previously, but as explained, that was coming out of uh, uh, excess funds left over from the labor 
uh, negotiation fund, and we're changing that now to come out of contingency funds. Do we need to withdraw motion to amend number one? Or no, it was no. never It was never introduced? Okay, great. All right, so motion to amend number two was moved by Roy, and do we have a second? No. Second. Second by Trent. Discussion? Well, basically what we're doing here is, and we heard testimony last week on the Willard Community Project. Uh, it's a very important renovation. Uh, this is being handled by a nonprofit organization, and the, they're providing important services to our community. And this additional $35,000 will put them over the top to qualify for some matching grants. And until quite recently, this was a city facility. So um, the nonprofit that has <clears throat> assumed responsibility has also inherited a number of uh, capital expenses that go with this project. So um, glad that the city can be supportive in the improvements. Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? <clears throat> Motion carried, five to zero. No. No, the main motion. Oh, on the main motion, sorry. Yeah. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried, five to zero. Item 25, approving the contract for services between Willard Community Center and the city to provide $100,000 to the Willard Community Center by April 15, 2017 to support the center's renovation project of its facility located at 1245 Folsom Street, introduced by Christensen. So moved. Second. I Second also, by Trent. I also have a, sec, uh, a motion to amend number two, which modifies uh, it to read $135,000 coming and coming from the contingency fund and other services and charges. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved by Roy and seconded by Trent. Discussion? Please call the roll on motion to amend number two. Fellers? Yes. Taylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Now on the main motion, please. Fellers? Yes. Taylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. Then on uh, Items 26 and 27, we need to delay action on those items for one week. So moved. Second. Delay for one week, moved by Trent and seconded by Roy. Discussion? Please call the roll. Fellers? Yes. Gaylor Beard? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero. All right. Resolutions first reading are items 28 through 31. Ordinances first reading are items 32 through 44. Our pending list is item 45. Anyone wishing to address the council on a matter not on this agenda and not plan to appear on a future agenda may do so at this time since it's an open microphone session. Seeing Madam Chair that no one's rushing up here, I move for adjournment. Second. <laughs> move for adjournment moved by John and seconded by Roy. Please call the roll. Fellers? No. Gaylor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you may sit here alone. <laughs> Gaylor Baird? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Camp? Yes. Christensen? Yes. Motion carried five to zero and Trent gets a time. We are adjourned. <laughs>